Welcome to the MAM Journals. I've actually had a few triumphs over the years, but many years ago. Um, I remember when they, the Renaissance in 2000 and they bought out the 790. I think I might have had one of those. I've had a few bikes, so I can't remember them all. And I definitely had an 865. I also had one of their first tribute bikes to the Thruxton. I've also tried a few more recently. I tried a friend's his version of the Thruxton R, which I really liked, although I have to say my back was slightly less enthusiastic. And I have had a go on the Rocket, which is a good name for a bike of that sort of power and performance. But it has been many years since I've actually ridden one in, in anger uh, and tried them. And a friend said to me, who's got a Triumph, he said, why don't you do Triumphs? I said, well, I've not really got any connections or links to them. He said, well, let me have a word, because the local... Triumph dealer, which is Premier Bikes, it's under new ownership, and the new dealer principal stroke co-owner is a really progressive and positive guy. Why don't you have a talk to him? I did, and he was right. He is. He said to me, I'll be happy to lend you bikes, and uh, we just need to get organised. And then he asked me, he said, what would you like to start with? And anybody who's familiar with the current Triumph range will understand my response. I said, well, I've got an inside leg of 29 and a half inches. Can you get me something that I can get on? So he laughed and said, leave it with me. I turned up at the dealership and here it is, the new Triumph Scrambler 1200X with an 820 seat height. Perfect. What we're going to do today is obviously going to go through the specifications, go for a ride, and then I'm going to come back and talk about how I found the new Triumphs. Okay. For those of you kind enough to watch the channel regularly, you know I like to start with the engine. This is a 1200cc, it's a parallel twin with a 270 degree crank. It produces 89 brake horsepower, which is 90 PS, if you think in that measurement, at 7,000 revs, and it produces an impressive 110 newton meters of torque at 4,250. The bike is fitted with a six-speed gearbox. The bike's fitted with a 21-inch front wheel. They're aluminium rims, and they've been what's called side-laced. In other words, the spokes are, coming, are exposed there on the side, and that's enabled the bike to run tubeless tyres. The tyre fitted is a 1990-21. The bike uh, was fitted, I think you call them Marzocchi uh, front forks. They're 45 mil, so they're quite substantial. They're non-adjustable and they have 170 millimetres of travel. The bike is fitted with twin 310 millimetre discs and it's got that two-piston Nissan caliper on it. I think they call that particular style of caliper an axial. And it's got... Up at the top, you can see the master cylinder is actually a Brembo radial system. In terms of rake on the bike, the degree is 26.2. Looking at the rear of the bike, the bike is fitted with a 17-inch wheel with uh, 4.25 rims. Again, it's aluminium and tubeless and it's fitted with a 150-70 R17 tyre. The twin shocks are Marzocchi and with a what's called piggyback reservoir and again that offers 170 millimetres of travel. It is non-adjustable other than preload through the threaded sleeve. The bike's fitted with a single 225 millimetre disc and it's a single piston floating Nissan. The swing arm is twin-sided and aluminium. In terms of the dimensions of the bike overall, its um, wheelbase is 1,525 millimetres, 1.525 metres, and the seat height, as I touched on in the introduction, is 820 millimetres. The previous models, I believe, were significantly taller. The tank is a 15-litre tank, and uh, if you think in gallons or imperial gallons, that's 3.3 imperial gallons. It does mm, about 58 miles to the gallon, which will theoretically give you a range of 191. And indeed, the gauge on it, when I'd fully brimmed it, suggested 178. Obviously, that allows 
allowing for some sort of reserve. The bike weighs 228 kilograms. In terms of aesthetic and finish, and um, whether you like this or not, I think you've probably already decided whether you like scramblers or not. Um, I do like upright, talky retro twins, including scramblers, like this one. And I think it's nicely proportioned, and it's got lots of little traditional styling cues. And a friend of mine, when he looked at it, said, it's not really my sort of bike, but I am getting a sort of Steve McQueen vibe, which I sort of can relate to. And indeed, my wife, I often bring her out to show her bikes when, I, when I'm lucky enough to borrow them. Her first comment was, oh, that looks cool, which is not a word she normally uses, but it obviously triggered something in, in here. She, she took one look at the high-level exhaust, though, and said, I'm not sure I'd want to put my leg anywhere near that. And in fairness, I think on this model, they've talked about doing something to reduce the heat that the exhaust produces, so maybe others have had the same feeling. I like the twin shocks on it. I think it sort of really works in the styling for the period. I do like the um, high exhaust. And I think little touches like having the chain on the right-hand side, because, of course, obviously, tra traditionally, British bikes, they had the gear change on the right-hand side and the chain was on the right-hand side, so managing to keep that in while moving it over to the left is just a nice aesthetic touch. Personally, I like the brown seat and the, I think they call them Monza filler caps. And I, I think overall they've managed to make the bike look old, but be modern, which is a good trick if you can get away with it. I did 200 miles on the bike and um, I, I did get it dirty, not as dirty as I've got some bikes in recent filming. Um, but still, it didn't look like that when it came in, and it cleaned up well and easily. I think it's um, going to be, it would be quite a good bike to keep together. And I think some of the finishes on it and the little attentions to detail are, for me, impressive. The bike is fitted with this single dial, and I think that's in keeping with the styling of the bike. But it's got more sophistication than you might think at first glance. This has got a, an LCD display on the top and a TFT display underneath. You can cursor through on this four position dial here. You can see that as I'm just rolling through, I'm getting various displays and information in front. I'll just get, get it back to main. And then if you actually want to go in and do some adjustments on the settings on the bike, you press the button and you're into riding modes. I'll just briefly show you those. I won't go through all of it, but as you can see, rain, road, sport, off-road and rider. So it's got five permutations in that regard. Coming back out of that, going to bike setup and then into that one, whether you want your indicators cancelling or not, how much traction control you want on or off. The modes itself will change how the traction control is applied because it is fitted with an IMU, inertia measurement unit. Again, coming back out of this and then going back into the main menu and cursor through. As you're riding along, it's very easy just to cursor through and get the dial or display that most suits you, what information you particularly like in front of you. We're all a bit individual. Um, date and time, overall mileage, temperature. Um, that's fuel. It's, it's blank at the moment because it doesn't start calculating what your range is, of course, until the engine's running trip, that's what I did for the last trip, and back to main menu. Simple, easy to read. One thing I'll just show you is underneath the seat here, which simply lifts up. Uh, not much space in there, but that's quite useful. That's actually where you charge your phone rem remotely and as you're going along, and it can touch a little bit when we go for a ride, you can actually connect with apps, with the drive app, which gives you additional information and basic guidance systems. I think that's a nice little touch. It's a traditional looking bike for the modern world.
One thing which I actually quite liked about the bike, and I've not seen it on other bikes, I'm sure they have been around, but they give you this little sticker which obviously comes off after you've run the bike in, showing you for the first 300 miles you've got 4,000 revs, 300 to 600, 5,000, and then 600 to 800, you can get up to six, and then you've got the full fat. Nice little touch. Saves everybody looking in the handbook. But enough of the theory, let's go for a ride. I think the first question we should deal with, is this a road bike or a dual purpose bike? Well, it is a dual purpose bike, but clearly the more road focused of the two versions available. It would be fun on light fire roads and tracks, but if your ambition is more than that, you may want to have a good look at the accessories available to make it a bit more suitable and a change of tyres. For the more serious, the XE is probably the one to go for, although you might need a box to get on it. 870 millimetres high seats take some getting on. For the purposes of this review, I'll be commenting on this version's road capability. The bike is easy to ride at slow speeds, the clutch is light and precise and the bike balanced. Although quite heavy, we said 228 kilograms in the specifications review, that's 501 pounds if you think in old money, the bike does not feel heavy to ride and the weight is nice and central. I didn't actually find it heavy to push around the garage nor onto the ramp either, it's nicely balanced. The slow speed riding position is comfortable. I had good foot contact on both sides. The wide bars and the 21 inch front wheel give you plenty of feel. Although I didn't film any this time, the bike filters really well and has the precision and stability that makes filtering easy. Out on the lanes, the two cylinder engine feels responsive and willing. On many new bikes that I ride, I keep my eye on the revs to make sure I'm not asking too much too soon. Initial running in revs on the Triumph are up to 4,000, although I later got up to 5,000, and with peak torque at 4,250, I had few constraints. I could have just popped it into a higher gear, but on new engines, manufacturers tend to recommend that you run at different revs and gears and avoid labouring the engine. The bike, as you expect, takes these sorts of lanes in its stride and with 170 millimetres of travel at either end and the 21 inch front wheel, it soaks up any potholes in its sleep. Once run in and the rider is familiar with the bike, these sorts of lanes would definitely be part of the bike's natural hunting grounds. Talking of which, I nearly opened the score with a pheasant near Bybury. On more open roads, the bike handles and performs well. It takes a little while to adjust to the slower steering with the bigger wheel, but it is smooth and predictable, and most importantly, fun. With an upright riding position and scrambler styling, not surprisingly, the faster you go, the more wind pressure and noise you feel. It is part of the character of the bike. According to Bike Magazine, a publication here in the UK, they estimate the top speed at 130 miles an hour. I have no idea if they're right, but suspect any that try it will end up with significantly longer arms and probably death. Did I mention it was fun? The talk of this bike is impressive. For those seeking terminal velocities, there is no substitute, of course, for horsepower, but on roads like this, torque is definitely your friend. Pop up the box and you've got plenty on tap. I have a retro roadster, the Z900 RS, which is a great bike. A traditional straight four, if you want power, you have to go and find it, and quick shift driven up can make for a dull ride. A viewer commented on a video that I made on it, why don't you just put it in sixth and cruise around? I do respect that we all ride differently, and indeed many of us ride differently on different days, but if your preference is for high gear, low rev riding, this engine is just the ticket. Triumph fit it in various states of tune to a number of their bikes. I like it. Alan, a friend who rode behind me on one of my riding days, commented, that thing's certainly got some torque. He was right. I do actually really like the idea of torquey twins. I have a Royal Enfield Interceptor that 
for fun, I fitted a big ball kit, taking it to 863cc and numerous other modifications. Anyone who's done such work knows that you can spend a fortune on these sort of projects, most of which you'll never see again, but there is a lot of pleasure to be had building one-off unique bikes. I still have it today and suspect it would give a Triumph 900 version of this bike a good run for its money. This 1200cc version is in another league. There is a lot of joy to be had out of riding a bike with more torque and power and this bike captures it really well. I found the brakes good. I suspect but haven't tried that the full Brembo system on the XE are better but these work well. I actually managed to activate the ABS system whilst pulling in for a road repair traffic lights and you can just see the movement on the bars. I certainly didn't feel as I needed any help at that stage and it was undoubtedly triggered by my selection of mode it, and it was cut in even earlier than my natural style prefers. I put it in sports and it didn't cut in again. It's good technology and does a good job. Personally, I like my dash displays to be clear and uncluttered and I thought the Triumph single dial suited both the bike and me perfectly. The four buttons on the left hand side of the handlebar were easy to operate on the go and supplied me with all the information that I required. The LCD display is clear, the TFT bright. You can connect to a Triumph app should you want, which I think on this bike gives you music, phone and basic guidance. I've no idea how good or otherwise it is and I do use such systems on some of my other bikes. I find, for example, the BMW system helpful and the Suzuki system slightly less so. If there is anyone watching and you have experience with the Triumph app, please feel free to comment below. It's always good to hear about owners' experience. We talked about low speed comfort and joked about what it might be like to ride at speed, but overall, I found the bike surprisingly comfortable. A lot more comfortable than the brown bench seat had me believe. Although I only did about 100 miles each day, it was time constraints, not comfort, that stopped me doing more. I would be very happy doing one of my 150 to 200 mile runs on this bike. The seat, leg and arm position all work for me. Dual carriageways were easy. The bike rolls along at 70 mile an hour while pulling a mere 3,600 revs and nicely in range of the peak torque should you need to accelerate past something. I estimate the bike would be doing something like 95 miles an hour at 5,000 revs so maybe Bike Magazine are right and it will do 130 with peak power arriving at 7,000. If this type of riding is a regular feature of your plans, you might want to opt for the heated grips, which at £235 are better value than some. Looking through their website, there are lots of ways to personalise the bike without taking out another mortgage. You could tour on the bike, although I personally think you can tour on anything if you're minded to, but I couldn't see a cruise control option, something I personally have got used to in the last few years for my longer trips. For me, this is a bike that you could ride into work on, do some gentle lanes occasionally, and most of all, ride out with your friends on a Sunday. I suspect a few of them might be surprised, but quite how brisk and capable this bike is. Oh, by the way, did I mention it was fun? Well, I've been away from the Triumph brand for a few years, and they've come a long way long way. I was impressed with the styling of the bike, the engineering finishing of the bike and it's very engaging to ride. The team at Premier Bikes have very kindly offered to lend me some more Triumphs and indeed some of their KTMs and their CF Motos and I'm really looking forward to exploring the Triumph range if this bike is representative of what Triumph are now offering, I'm going to have some fun in the next six months. 
Well, I do hope that you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you did, you might be kind enough to either press like or consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so. But as always, what's most important is you ride safe and stay well.